Hello everyone. So today I'm going to talk about the derived roads. But before I do, I just want to say that we should all give a big round of applause to Keith for creating the club in the first place and hosting this forum because without him doing that, none of us would be able to do this because uh, there's a lot of power in being able to collaborate and share knowledge and information. So um, with that being said, uh, before we actually get involved with the derived roads, I just want to do one thing. And I just want to remind people to um, try and make use of the bead plate if you feel like it, because it is a valuable resource. Um, patterns form and uh, sometimes they can be very valuable and uh, give you tips that can help you win some money. No guarantees, but chances do exist. So uh, vertical lines don't mean that much because they are they just represent a run, which happens lots of time in the shoe. But the horizontal lines and the diagonal lines do mean a little more. They have more significance. A horizontal line means that events are occurring every five hands. I mean, every six hands. And um, just like these players here, every six hands they're hitting. And a diagonal line going from the lower left to the upper right means that events are occurring every five hands. Like these bankers right here. Or these players. There's seven players in a row. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven seven times in a row, five hands apart, which is pretty significant. So I just wanted to remind you to try and, uh, you know, not forget to use this. You might uh, find some patterns there to help you win some money. Anyway, that's all for that bead plate. So uh, this shoe was posted on our forum, and I decided that I was going to use this for an example. So that's what we're going to use as an example. And so I uh, just wanted to give you an overall look of uh, what the shoe looks like ahead of time. So uh, with that being said, uh, the way things work is that um, the, um, yeah, the big road, the bead plate, the big eye boy derived road, the small road derived road, and the cockroach pig derived road. And this is the prediction table. And I have some bad news for you. The prediction table is not going to tell you what hand's going to win next time. That's not what it does. But what it will do is it will predict which colors the symbols will be based on whether a banker or a player does come up in the next hand. You know, so if a player wins the next hand, there will be certain colors shown, and that is the color that the symbols will be when they appear in these roads. And uh, if the symbols for the banker, uh, they may be the same color or different colors, but they will represent the colors that will be shown on the symbols that appear in the roads after a banker hits next time. So, um, the symbols, the, the symbols for the big eye boy are hollow circles. You can call them rings or donuts if you want, whatever. The symbols for the small road are discs you know, solid discs or hamburgers, whatever you want to call them. And the symbols right here for the cockroach pig are slashes or toothpicks or French fries or chopsticks, whatever, whatever you want to call them, as long as you know what they are. So uh, the big eye boy, the, the predictions are generated by comparing columns with each other. And the uh, way it works is that 
there are no prediction symbols shown unless there are enough columns to do a comparison for the different roads. So you need at least two columns for a comparison. So one column is not enough to make a comparison, so there are no symbols shown. Now that you have two columns with at least one event in each column, the symbol for the big eye boy appears as in the prediction table. So that means that you can compare these two columns now and make a comparison, and that will give you a prediction. Now, nothing appears in the road yet. What will appear in, in the road is the next hand after the prediction. So the way it works is um, there are some rules to follow when you, uh, when you uh, an compare and analyze these columns or runs. But uh, I'll get to them in a minute. But basically, you need two columns to make a comparison. And the reason that there are different colors is because of whether the next upcoming hand is going to be a banker or a player. So if the next hand is a player, uh, well, let me put it this way. The uh, prediction table is saying that uh, if a player comes up next time, in the next hand, the symbol that will be in the Big Eye Boy Road will be red. And if a banker wins the next hand, the symbol in the Big Eye Boy Road will be blue. And the colors do not have anything to do with banker or player. These colors represent predictability or chaos. So a red color means predictability or stable or consistent and blue means chaotic or irregular or you know unstable you know so that's what the colors signify red means predictability or consistent or st stability and blue means irregularity or chaotic or you know um, unstable so this means there's a lot of variation in the shoe. The blue symbol and the red symbol means that the shoe is fairly stable or consistent. So you have two columns and the way it works is if a player comes up next time, it will be in the top row as an opposite. So when that happens, it will confirm this as a one in a row. And this one in a row will be compared to this one in a row, and they are the same. So that is why the symbol is red if you get a player. Now, if you got a banker coming up next time, instead, you would have a two in a row, which is different from a one in a row, and that is why the symbol is blue if a, play if a banker hits next time. Now... The first thing I have to say is, you know, there are certain rules to follow for the comparisons, and uh, I'll get to I'll get to that in a minute. But the important thing is, first of all, for the prediction table to generate predictions, you need to make comparisons between a certain number of columns. So there's two columns necessary to create a prediction symbol for the big eye boy road. You need three um, columns to make two comparisons. One for the Big Eye Boy road, and another comparison for the small road. And that's why now you have two different uh, prediction symbols shown, you know, for the Big Eye Boy and for the small road. Now, there is nothing there for the cockroach pig road yet because you do not have enough columns. You need one more column. So now that you have four columns, you can make a comparison for the big eye boy, the small road, and for the cockroach pig. Now the big eye boy, you compare the current column, you know, the last column that you're in, with the column immediately to your left. That's for the big eye boy. The small road, the comparison is made between the last column, the one you're in, and two columns to its left. 
and that's what is compared for the small road. And the cockroach pig is using these two columns to make a comparison. The column you're in, the or the, the current column, I should say, the current column. It's not the column you're in, it's the current column. Well, it's, most of the time it's the same thing, but this is the column, the source column, so to speak, and you're comparing it to this three columns back, and that is for the cockroach pig. So, um, that's how that works there. Now, um, the way it works is the big eye boy compares two, these two columns. All right? So, uh, assuming that this is the current column and this is uh, one of the hands, like this 22 is the last hand it was dealt, this is your current column. And you compare this column with the column to its immediate left for the big eye boy prediction symbol. And then the small road, you make a comparison between that column and two columns to its left. And that is the comparison to generate the prediction symbol for the small road. Now the cockroach pig compares that column with three columns to its left. So it compares this column with your current column to generate the prediction symbol for the cockroach pig. So that's how the compare, which columns are compared. But there's some finer points involved in this as we will see some of the situations vary a little bit. So uh, the columns which you actually compare uh, will vary, but it's not that hard. There are certain rules, but they're easy to follow. You just have to understand them. So um, this is what is compared for the big eye boy. This is what's compared for the small road. And this is what's compared for the cockroach pig. So um, let's see here. Now, the prediction symbols happen first. And then one event after a prediction symbol appears in the prediction table is when the upcoming hand after it is dealt, one event later is when it will appear in one of the derived roads. Now, the derived roads do not all start at the same time, and they don't start at the same time that the big road starts. The, the first hand is not enough to make a comparison, or the first column. So the second column gives you the ability to create a prediction symbol for the big eye boy. Now, once the prediction table starts showing uh, symbols for each of the three roads, it will continue to do so every hand that occurs in the big road. So once the prediction table starts showing symbols for the big eye boy, every hand after that or every column after that, I should say, every hand after that, it will continue to generate new prediction symbols for the big eye boy. Now, the symbol for the big eye boy does not appear in its road until the next hand. So, assuming that it's a third column, well, even if it's not a third column, even if it's still only in two columns, you it will still show more prediction symbols. But if there is a third column in use now, with at least one event in it, now the big eye boy symbol will appear on the uh, road, and on, on in its road, and at the same time, the prediction table will start generating a symbol for the small road. And once it starts doing that, it will continue to do so as it moves along every hand. And the fourth column, as soon as that becomes populated with at least one event, that uh, small road symbol will appear in the road, and the cockroach pig will now be able to create uh, uh, have a symbol created for it in the prediction table. So that means you need four columns. You need two columns for this prediction table, or for this prediction symbol. You need three columns for this prediction symbol and four columns for this prediction symbol. And then 
once you've met the minimum requirement of four columns to generate all three different respective uh, prediction symbols for all of the roads, that's when uh, they're all up and running. Except that you still need one more hand for the cockroach pig's first symbol to appear on its road. So you need four columns to make comparisons to generate the prediction symbols for all three roads. Now, you still, like I said, need one more hand for that third prediction symbol for the cockroach pig to be validated and show the result in the cockroach pig road, uh, either as, you know, a red or blue uh, slash. And that can occur no, ma no matter whether you have a repeat in the fourth column or whether you have an opposite in the fifth column. It doesn't matter. Now, I know it sounds complicated. Now, here's a different and better, easier way to uh, understand it. So, the way it works is the first column is not enough to make a comparison. With an entry in the second column, uh, now this is the soonest that this can happen. This is with all opposites. If you have more players here, or let me go back and show you something. If you have, um, if you have a bunch of uh, entries, a bunch of hands, and they're only occupying one column, you will not get any prediction symbols whatsoever. All right. As soon as you start to, as soon as you have two columns in use, now you are able to generate the big eye boy prediction symbol. However, even if you have a lot more um, hands occurring you're not going to generate prediction symbols for the other two roads yet because you only have two columns in use, all right? So let's say now that you have a third column in use. Now the prediction symbol will appear for the second uh, small road, like I said earlier. And if you have... Um, Let's say that you have um, something like that. Well, you're at hand eight already, and you still have not shown any prediction symbols for the cockroach pig. So let's get a banker. Now you have four columns, and now you are able to make three comparisons, one for the big eye boy, one for the small road, and one for the cockroach pig. So once you have four columns showing, now you are able to generate all of your prediction symbols. And the next hand, there's nothing in the cockroach pig road yet. So if you get another hand, now you have a symbol appearing in the cockroach pig road. Even though it was a repeat and you're still only in four columns, it still appears. And now all of the roads are up and running. And from now on, the prediction symbol will be creating new prediction symbols every hand. And new entries will be appearing in the in each of the derived roads, every single hand. Except for one thing, if there are ties. If there are any ties whatsoever, doesn't matter how many there are, nothing happens with the derived roads. The prediction symbols don't change. The derived roads don't show any more entries because the derived roads have no conception whatsoever of ties. Ties do not exist for the derived road. Everything gets put on hold, and the derived roads and the prediction table wait for either another banker or another player. They ignore ties totally. So, um, now, like I said, if you have four columns in use, you've met the minimum requirement for all of the prediction table uh, symbols to be shown, and now for the fifth hand can be either a repeat or an opposite. So a repeat will put a symbol in the cockroach pig, or an opposite will put a symbol in the cockroach pig. So after the fifth hand, now this is the soonest it can happen, because like I said, we're at hand 10 already, and that's because these right here wasted time. They wasted hands, so to speak. So what I'm going to show you is that if you have it like this, this is the third hand, the fourth hand, and the fifth hand. So the fifth hand 
is the soonest you could possibly have all of the roads up and running with an entry appearing in each one, at least one entry appearing in each one, and all three of the prediction symbols are being generated in the prediction table. So that's the soonest that can occur. So, um, so this explains everything that happens. Now, this right here is the same exact information that occurs on every hand or every column as this. This right here is exactly identical to this over here, except for the fact that this has five opposites and this has four opposites and a repeat. But the same exact things happen on the fifth hand as happen over here on the fifth hand. The same things happen with at the same amount of time. At, you know, it's identical. So now I'm going to put all of these graphics I'm using on uh, on the on the forum. I'll make a thread and uh, you know I'll I'll post these graphics up there for your own reference and. Uh, that should be helpful for you. And so, um, but anyway, this is exactly how it works. This is what happens. This is what occurs in what order. Uh, and it tells you when it happens. Okay, so that's, that's how that all works. So uh, let me see here now. Um, okay, so the... Um, Let's just do a uh, go through the shoe and uh, reproduce the shoe. Let's go through the uh, scoreboard app and reproduce the shoe here. So um, let's see. The next hand's a banker. Okay, so now we have um, enough to make a, compar a prediction comparison to generate a prediction. So if you get another, uh, if you get a player. Now, there are some rules to follow, and, I, and I'll, get, I'll, I'll explain them as we go. So now, if the upcoming hand is going to be an opposite, and it will be in the top row of the big road, that means that it will confirm the previous column. See, right now, this is your current column, and you are in this column. And when you are in the column... The current column is always an unconfirmed column. Now, when you are comparing columns, you know, as as a as a new column is generated, right? As a new event occurs in each new column, the previous column becomes confirmed. So if you are in the tenth column, the previous nine columns are all confirmed. And the current column is always unconfirmed. So when you have a column that is, when you are comparing two columns that are confirmed, that means that those columns are, are will never be able to change. Whatever they, if there are three in a row and a four in a row, they will always be a three in a row and a four in a row. But if you are in this column right here, this is not confirmed. So this could be a two in a row. It could be a four in a row. You could have 20 bankers and it'll be a 20 in a row. So until the next opposite occurs and confirms this as what it happens to be. I mean, like right now, you know, you could have this and this is an unconfirmed four in a row. It is not confirmed until you get an opposite. And now this is cast in stone. It's now confirmed and locked in as a four in a row. So what that means is that if you have something like this and if the upcoming hand appears in the top row of the big road. That will confirm this as a one in a row. And then you can look at the runs in their entirety, knowing that they will never, that none of them will be able to change. And you will be able to look at them as completed, finalized, finished runs. And you can look at them in this fashion and say, a one in a row is the same as a one in a row. So if we get a player here, it'll be red, and it will be red for the big eye boy. Now, if you got a banker, since you are not in the top row, you have to do 
a row by row, space by space comparison. And this is the secret, and this is important. This is the whole important thing about doing this. When you are analyzing this and you are looking at this, you are not really just saying it's a one in a row and it's a one in a row. Well, it really is a one in a row. But the truth is, what you have to do is you have to compare the space. Now, like pretend, pretend that a banker is going to appear here. All right. Pretend that a banker will appear here in the next hand. So what you have to do is you compare this space with the space above it. And you see if they are the same as each other. So they will be the same as each other because this is occupied and this will be occupied by a banker. That means both of these spaces are the same as each other. Then you go to the left to the column you're comparing this, this column with and you analyze the same two spaces and you compare this, this, both of these two spaces and you see if they are both the same as each other or if they are different. Now this is occupied and this space is empty. That means these two spaces are different. So these two spaces will be considered the same because a banker will be there, right? So these two spaces will both be occupied, so they will be the same as each other. And these two spaces will be different from each other. That means that these two columns will be treated as if they are different from each other. That's why if you get another banker, it's blue. It is not because it's a one in a row and a one in a row, or a two in a row and a one in a row. It's not that simple. What you are really doing, what you are really doing, the way it really, really, really works is when you have a one in a row, like let's say you get an opposite. Now, remember, you're, you have to compare the space that has just occurred with the space above it. Now, there is no space above this. So you cannot compare this to the space above it to see if it's the same or different because the space above it does not exist. You are already in the top row. That means you cannot use this column in your comparison. You can only use a column in your comparison if it is in the second space or lower. So since this has no space above it, you cannot do the two space comparison. All right. That means you have to compare these two columns. All right. So that's why you have to think of it as comparing this space with the space above it to see if they're the same as each other. And then looking over here and comparing these two spaces to see if they are the same as each other. And then if this, these are different from each other. See, this is occupied and this is empty. So they are different from each other. Now, this space is occupied and this space is empty. That means that these are different from each other. So that means that these two columns are both, these spaces are different from each other and these spaces are different from each other. So these two columns are treated as if they are the same as each other, like they're similar. That's why if you get a player, that prediction symbol last time, was red because if you get a player that's what will happen it will be a red symbol in the big eye boy road see right here now that's the whole secret you have to do the mickey mouse up and down space comparison that's how it really 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 works you are not just looking at it to see you know if you are uh you know a single or a double or or three in a row or whatever. That's not really, really what's happening. That's the whole way that the rules differentiate between how you compare the columns, whether you are in the top row or whether you are in the second row or lower. And you'll, as you'll see in a minute, that's why it's important to think of comparing these spaces this way because otherwise you will think that you're getting one color symbol and it will be different what you're thinking it will be will be different from what the prediction table says it will be and here's how it works now okay so let's say that we need to um okay let's rep replicate our shoe so let's see um okay we we get two bankers here 
And then, uh, all right, so we get two players now. So, well, let me back up. So we have two bankers. This is how we are now. And our first big, uh, big eye boy symbol has appeared in the road. So now, if the next hand is a player, all right, it will finalize this as a two in a row. Now, here's another secret. If the upcoming hand is in the top row, all right, it is true that you can there is no space above it. So you cannot compare it with the space above it to do your comparison. So that means that you cannot use this column in your comparison, all right? That means you have to use the column to its left and whatever other column to its left that the comparison is made. So if you are doing the big eye boy, it checks the column to your left, all right? If you're doing the uh, small road, it checks two columns to its left. But you you don't have that many columns, so that's why you can only have a prediction for this big eye boy so far. But if it was a player, and if the if the event the upcoming event is in the upper row, uh, upper row of the big road, you do not have to do this Mickey Mouse uh, comparison routine. You can just look at it as finished, completed, confirmed, finalized runs and say a two in a row is different from a one in a row. So if a player occurs, it will be blue. So that's, that's really how it works. If your upcoming hand appears in the top row as an opposite, you don't have to do this comparison routine because that means you are comparing two confirmed runs and they are they are completed and finished and finalized and and done it's a done deal that's what they are that's what they'll always be that means that you don't have to do a row by row comparison okay so if you get a banker now here's where I'm telling you why it's imp I'm going to show you why it's important to think of it when you do your comparisons, to think of it as comparing the space to see if they're empty or similar to each other. Because you would think that right now, let's say that you get a banker, and a banker is going to appear here, right? So let's say that a banker is going to appear here. Now that will make this a three in a row, and you're comparing it to a one in a row. Now, Logic would seem to say, well, a three in a row is definitely different from a one in a row, so it will be blue, but it won't. The prediction table says that if a banker occurs, it will be red, and the reason is this is a transition point, all right? So up until now, you've been neck and neck. They're even with each other. Now, as soon as that banker occurs now, you have reached a transition point, and now they are different from each other, all right? Since they're different from each other, it's blue, all right? Because if you got a player here now, this would not grow anymore, and it would be final, and you would say a two is different from a one, and you're done. However, like I said, this is a transition point because if you get another banker, and you put a banker here, you will, you will do this comparison and say this space is occupied and so is this with another banker. And that means these two spaces are the same as each other. And you will compare them to these two spaces and you will see that these spaces are also both the same as each other. That means that this column will be treated the same as this column because they're similar. Because both of these spaces are the same as each other and these two spaces are the same as each other. And that is the secret. That is how you make sure that your color that you're going to have in the prediction table in your mind is the same as what the prediction table is saying. Otherwise, you would be wrong because you would think this is a three in a row and this is a one in a row and they're different, so it'll be blue. The reason it's not blue is because you're doing it wrong. You have to do it on a row by row comparison when you're not in the top row of the of the big road so the next hand is really a player so let's get our player so now we have three columns in use and 
we have the two prediction table symbols here, or two symbols in the prediction table, and we have two entries in the Big Eye Boy Road. Now, if you get a banker, it will confirm this as a one in a row. Now, since you are all, this is confirmed, and so are these two, but since this has now been confirmed, you don't have to do the Mickey Mouse comparison routine down here. You can just look at them as completed final run, confirmed runs, and say a one in a row is different from a two in a row, so it would be blue, all right? And it is, if you got a banker, and a one in a row is the same as a one in a row for the small road prediction symbol, and so that means it would be red, and it is. Now, if you got a player, if you got another player, then you would compare, it's true, if you got a player, it would be a two in a row, but you've got to get out of the thinking that way. You only look at it that way if the upcoming hand that occurs is in the top row. So that is helpful for after the hand occurs so that you can look back through the shoe and understand what's happening correctly. So if you got another player, you would compare both of these spaces and see that they are the same as each other. They're both occupied. You'd look to the left for the big eye boy and see that these are both the same as each other. So the prediction symbol for the big eye boy would be red because they are being these two columns are being treated the same as each other. And it is red. And then the two in a row is different from the one in a row because, you know, if you got another player, both of these spaces would be the same as each other. And these spaces would be different from each other because this is occupied and this is empty. So this is not the same. You know, these are the same as each other, and these are different from each other. So these two columns for the small road comparison would be treated like they are different from each other. So that means that if you got another player, it would be blue. That's why it's blue. So let's get our player. So. Now, and there it is. There's the blue symbol in the small road. The red symbol is in the big eye boy because um, these are the same. These columns were treated as the same as each other, so it's red. And these columns are treated as being different from each other, and that's why it's blue. Now, the reason you do this row-to-row -row comparison is because this is your current column, and it is not confirmed yet. That means it can change over time. So that is why it is necessary to do a row-by-row -row comparison, because what you're doing is you're checking to see if they're the same as each other at this point in time. They will not always be the same as each other. It could change. So the best you can do is determine if they're the same as each other right now. All right, and the only way to do that with an unconfirmed column is if you do it row by row, because the next hand, it could change, and then it's totally different, and you'll get different colored symbols. They'll, you know, they'll be different. So, now, if you got another player, all right, that means that these two columns would be the same as each other, occupied, and for the big eye boy, these would be different from each other because this is occupied and this is empty. That means that these would be treated as being different from each other if you got another player. And it is. It's blue. Now, if you got another player, these would be the same as each other. And for the small road comparison, these would also be the same as each other. So even though these are both empty and these are both occupied, they're st these are still the same as each other. And these are both the same as each other. So that means that these co two columns would be treated as being the same. And that's why the small road prediction symbol is red if you got another player here. Now, if you got a banker instead, it would finalize this as a two in a row. It would confirm it as a two in a row. Then you don't have to do this Mickey Mouse comparison anymore. And you can say a two is the same as a two, so it's red. And a two is different from a one, and it's blue. So that's why it's red and blue. So the big eye boy prediction would be red here, and it would be blue for the small road here, and it is. So let's get our banker. Now there's our red and blue symbols. Okay, so now 
Uh, okay, so now let's say you get another banker. Now, now our third prediction symbol has been generated. See, until now, it wasn't there. Okay, now it's there. Okay, because you have four columns in use and you can make three comparisons. You can compare these two columns for the big eye boy. You can compare these two columns for the small road. And you can compare these two columns for the cockroach pig. So if you got another banker, this would be the same as each other. And you compare it to these two, and it would be the same as each other. So these two columns would be treated the same, and it's red, and it is. These would be the same as each other, and these two are the same as each other. So these two columns for the small row would be treated as if they are the same. So the small row prediction symbol is red also. And these two symbols for the cockroach pig comparison, uh, these would be... Um, the same as each other because they would both be occupied with a banker and this would be different from each other because this is occupied and this is empty. So these two columns right here for the cockroach pig comparison would be treated as if the, these two columns are different. So it would be blue and it is. Now, that's if you got another banker. But if you got a player here that would finalize the, and confirm this as a one in a row you don't have to do this Mickey Mouse stuff down here anymore. You can look at it as completed, finalized, confirmed runs, and you can because all the, you know this run is confirmed, so it, it makes it easy to confirm uh, to compare. As long as all the runs are confirmed, you can compare them just by looking at them. So a one is different from a two, so it's blue. A one is different from a two, so it's blue. A 1 is the same as a 1, so it's red. So that's, okay, so that's if you got um, a player. And so let's get our player. So now if we got another banker right now, and there, there's our red symbol because of the comparison, because it was the same. Um, or actually, wait a second. So there's, that's what you get. You get the, the, if you got a player, you get to blue, blue, red. And I mean, if you got another banker, right? If you got another banker, it would be um, same, same, different. So that's why it's same, same, different. So, but instead, it's really a banker, uh, a player. So there's our player. So now, for the next prediction, you are in the top row, which means this is a confirmed one in a row. You cannot use this in your in your prediction uh, calculations, remember, because there's no space above it to see if it's the same. So you have to use the column to your left to make your predi prediction, to make, you know, as one of your three columns, four columns that you're using in your prediction. So you cannot use this. You cannot use the column as part of your comparison unless you're in the second row or lower. So this is confirms this as a one in a row. So this one in a row is different from this two in a row. It's different from this two in a row. And it's the same as this one in a row. So it would be blue, blue, red. I mean, I'm sorry. Yeah. So it would be blue, blue, red. If you got a banker. Wait, what am I doing wrong? I'm doing something wrong here. Let me think. Oh, no, that's what happened. I We already did this. All right, I, I have to make the prediction for the next one, right? So um, if you got another banker, then that would finalize this as a one in a row. And this one in a row is the same as this one in a row, and it would be red. So it is red. This would be different from this two in a row, and so it would be blue. And this one in a row would also be different from this two in a row for the cockroach pig. And that's why this would be blue also. That's with a banker here. If you got another player right here, then you would compare these two spaces and see they're the same as each other. And these are different from each other. So these two columns would be considered different from each other. So it's blue if you got another player. 
Same thing. This is would be the same as each other. These are the same as each other, and these are the same as each other. So the comparison for the small road and the comparison for the cockroach pig would both be red because they're both being treated as the same as this column. So they're, that's why they're red. All right. But uh, it's really a player, so let's get our player. So now you have the red there. So now um, if you got another player, this would be treated as the same as each uh, same as each other, both occupied. This would be the same, be treated as the same as each other, uh, empty. So that means that these two columns would be considered the same as each other. If you got another player, that's why it's red. The uh, they're the same as each other. This would be different from each other, and this would be different from each other. So that's why the small road would be blue. And that's why the cockroach pig prediction would be blue also with another player. But if you got a banker, then it would finalize this and, and confirm it as a two in a row. And then you don't have to do the goofy routine down here anymore. You can just say a two is different from a one. A, a two is the same as a two and a two is the same as a two. So it would be blue, red, red. And it's blue, red, red. All right. That's with a banker. So, let's say that you got a player. So if you got a player up here, it would confirm this as a one in a row, and the one in a row is different from a two in a row, so it's blue. A one in a row is the same as another one in a row for the small road, so it's red, and a one in a row is different from a two in a row for the cockroach pig, and it's blue. That's what they are. But if you got another banker, this these two would be the same as each other. These two would be the same as each other for the big eye boy, so it's red. These two would be this different from each other because this would both be occupied and they would be the same as each other. And this is occupied and this is empty, so these are different from each other. So these two columns for the big uh, small road comparison would be treated as if they were different, and that's why it's blue. Then this would be the same as each other. And for the cockroach pig, this is the same as each other. So for the cockroach pig prediction symbol, these two columns would be treated as if they are the same, and it would be red, and it is. So let's get our banker. And there's our red symbol there. It's red, blue, red, just like it was before. All right, so... Uh, okay, let's just do a couple more real quick. So if you got a player here... A player would confirm this as a two in a row. A two in a row is the same as a two in a row here, so it would be red. A two in a row is different from a one in a row, so it would be blue. And a two in a row is the same as a two in a row here, so it would be red. So it would be red, blue, red if you got another player, and that's what it is. Red, blue, red. If you got a banker here, these would both be occupied. They'd be the same as each other. These would be different from each other, so these two columns would be treated differently as they were different if you got a banker and it's blue so just like i said these would be the same as each other and also these would be the same as each other so for the small road comparison these two columns would be treated as if they were the same that's why it's red and these would be the same as each other and these would be different from each other so for the cockroach pig comparison these two columns would be treated as if they were different so it is blue all right so let's get our banker here and uh, let's see, we get one more banker, right? Yeah. Okay, so if we got a player here, it would confirm this as a three in a row. A three in a row is different from a two in a row. A three in a row is different from a one in a row. And a three in a row is different from a two in a row. So it would be blue, red, blue with another, with a player. I mean, I'm sorry. If we got a player, a three is different from a two, a three is different from a one, and a three is different from a two. So it would be blue, 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 and that's what it is, blue, 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 with a player here. However, another banker, and this is, you can see right here, this is where it's important to do the comparison, because you would think that if you had a four in a row, it's different from a two in a row, so it would be blue. But it's not. It's red. And the reason is, you have to do the space comparison. So another banker, you would compare both of these and find that they were both occupied, and they are the same as each other. 
you would compare this for the big eye boy, and they are the same as each other. So these two columns would be treated as if they are the same as each other. And it is. It's red. This would be the same as each other, and these would be the same as each other. So for the small road comparison, these two columns would be considered the same as each other, and it's red. These would be the same as each other. The cockroach pig comparison would also be the same as each other. So these two columns would be considered the same. That's why this is red also with another banker. So there's our banker. And that's why it's red, red, red. So, uh, okay, we get a player now. So, But if we got another banker, just remember now, we've passed that transition point. So from now on, it doesn't matter how many bankers you get, you're going to get a string of red symbols in all of these roads because that's how it works. That's You're just you know, generating, you've, you've passed that transition point, and from now on, all of these spaces, the two, you know, these two spaces are the same as each other, and these two spaces will be the same as each other, and these two spaces will be the same as each other, and these two spaces will be the same as each other, and these two spaces will be the same as each other. And since they're, and, you know, these two spaces are the same, these are the same, these are the same, then the next hand will be these were the same, these are the same, these are the same, then the next hand would be these are the same, these are the same, these are the same. And then you can pretend that it goes on forever to compensate for this going sideways. And you would say, well, these are the same, and these are the same, and these are the same. So as long as that keeps happening, all of these symbols are going to be red. So um, i got to get rid of There we go. Yeah, okay. So now that's if you got a banker. Now, if you got a player, it will confirm this as a four in a row. And like I said, you don't have to do this Mickey Mouse space comparison anymore. You can look at it as, as finished runs, and com they're, they're completed, they're done. They'll never change. A 4 is different from a 2, a 4 is different from a 1, and a 4 is different from a 2. So if you got a player, they would be blue, and they're all blue. So there's your player. So um, that's how that works. Now, I, I want to try and keep this an hour maximum. So let's do this. Let's go um, now. Like I said, I'm going to put all these graphics up on the forum. Um, the big eye boy starts on hand three. The small road starts on hand five, and the cockroach pig starts on hand seven. Now that's these numbers would be different if they were all of the hands were like all um, opposites. But there's a couple of repeats. There's a repeat here and a repeat here. So that means that, you know, the hands started a little bit later than they normally would because this, okay, so the way it works, okay. So you look at these two hands right here and you say, okay, well, I can make a comparison and make a prediction for the uh, big eye boy. So uh, if I get a banker, then it'll be blue, and if I get a uh, player, it'll be red. Well, I got a banker, so for hand three, it's blue. Hand four confirms this as a two in a row. A two in a row is different from a one in a row, so for hand four, it's blue. Hand five makes this a two in a row temporarily. You have to do the space comparison and can compare it over here, but the two in a row is the same as this two in a row, all right? So for hand five, it's red. That's for the big eye boy. Now, if you wanted to compare it for the small road, this two in a row is different than this one in a row. So for the small road, it would be blue for hand five, and it is. Hand six confirms this as a two in a row. It's the same as this two in a row. So hand six would be red for the big eye boy, and it is. Now, this two in a row is different from this one in a row for hand six. That's why or I mean, hand six confirms this as a two in a row. So this would be um, the same for uh, hand six, which is red. And if you wanted to do it for the small road, it would be different. It would be blue for hand six, and it is. All right? Now, you can't... Uh, this starts on hand seven for the cockroach pig because you only have four columns in use. Four columns gets you a prediction symbol for the cockroach pig, but it doesn't put a symbol on the road itself. You need the hand after the fourth column becomes activated. 
This would have happened on the fifth hand if you hadn't wasted these two being repeats. If they were just, if all the hands were opposites, this would have happened on the fifth hand. So, hand seven confirms that hand six has a one in a row. So, a one is different from a two, and it, it is blue in the big eye boy. A six is different from, uh, a, a one in a row is different than a two in a row for the small road. So hand six, or I mean hand seven, is also blue here. And um, this one in a row is the same as this one in a row right here for the cockroach pig. And that's why hand seven created this red symbol in the cockroach pig. Hand eight confirms, or hand eight is, a, a, you know, a two in a row. It's different from a one in a row here. So for the big eye boy, hand eight is blue. Um, this two in a row is the same as this two in a row here for the small road, and it's the same as this two in a row for the cockroach pig. So both of these for hand eight would be red. Hand eight is red. Hand eight is red. Hand nine confirms this as a two in a row. So this two in a row is different from this one in a row for this big eye boy. Hand uh, nine is, uh, so this two in a row is the same as this two in a row for the small road, and it's the same as this two in a row for the cockroach pig. So it would be blue, red, red. So hand nine would be blue, red, red. Hand ten, the, this is, at this point in time, so far, it is a two in a row. So that means that it's treated the same as this. So for the big eye boy, it would be red. For the small road, it would be blue because these are both populated and they're, they're the same as each other. And this is different from each other because this is occupied and this is empty. So uh, this would be blue here. And these two, seven and eight, would be treated, or um, I mean, hand 10 would be the same as hand uh, four, four and five, so two in a row. And this is two showing. So in other words, this is both the same as each other, and this is both the same as each other. So for the cockroach pig, it would be red also. All right? So that's why it's red, blue, red. So for hand 10, it would be red, blue, red. Hand 11, both of these spaces are the same as each other. That means these are different from each other. So these two columns are treated differently for uh, the big eye boy. So hand 11 is blue. Hand 11, both of these are the same as each other. And over here, for the small road, both of these are empty. They're both the same as each other. So for the small road comparison, these two columns will be considered the same for hand 11. That's why 11 is red. And these two are the same as each other, both occupied. And over here, you know, you go over three more for the cockroach pig. And these are different from each other. This is occupied and this is empty. So this compare this column is considered different from this column for the cockroach pig. That's why hand 11 is blue in the cockroach pig. Hand 12, both of these are the same as each other. So if you go over here, for the big eye boy, they're both the same as each other. The small road, these are both the same as each other. And the cockroach pig are both the same as each other. So all three of these roads would be, columns would be considered the same as this column here for 12. So that's why 12 is red here, 12 is red here, and 12 is red here. Hand 13 confirms this as a four in a row. A four in a row is different from a two, it's different from a one, it's different from a two. So hand 13 would be red, 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 I mean blue, blue, blue. So hand 13 is blue, blue, blue. Hand 14 confirms 13 is a one in a row. 13 is different from a 4, it's different from a 2, and it's the same as a 1 in a row on here. So it would be blue, blue, red for hand, thir uh, for hand 14. So hand 14 is blue, blue, red. Hand 15 is a 2 in a row. That means both of these spaces are the same as each other. These two spaces are different from each other for the big eye boy. They're the same as each other for the small road, and they're the same as each other for the cockroach pig. So for hand 15, it would be blue, red, red. So hand 15 is blue, red, red. You can see what's happening, right? 
So I'm at an hour right now. And uh, I'm going to have to end this. I uh, don't want to, you know, keep going. I could keep going, but, you know. Uh, but anyway, uh, that's, that's how everything works. That's how everything works. But the important thing to remember is that um, the columns that are compared are one column to the left for the big eye boy, two columns to the left for the small road, and three columns to the left for the cockroach pig. And um, also, um, like I said, I will put this on the forum, and this explains uh, what happens if hand 23 is either a player or a banker. It ends up being a banker, like it says down here. But if we pretended that it was that hand 23 was a player, then that's what this uh, talks about here, right? So, like I said, uh, I'm I'm at an hour now, and uh, I'm going to end this video. And I hope that uh, I explained everything well enough to help you people, uh, you know, maybe understand the derived roads now and uh, maybe help you win some money and uh, lots of money. <laughs> so, which is really, uh, it's really the goal, isn't it? I mean, you know, I don't know. I mean, some people might play back red up just for fun, but I think we're all really in it to win some money. Otherwise, we'd have fun whether we won or lost, right? And that's not the case. <laughs> so anyway, um, thank you for watching. I hope I've been helpful. And um, if you have any questions or anything like that, you need something explained better or differently, just ask. Thank you very much. Goodbye.